So here's the deal. Here's how I'm going to show you how to outline a uh, JPEG that you've either pulled from the internet or your computer or otherwise. So I have a number of files over here that uh, I've pulled from the internet. Here's one. It's a JPEG. Um, it's just a, a crucifix with Christ's face in it. So uh, this image is just that. It's just it's an image. Um, when you do the outlining in laser or light burn, uh, you will actually outline the outside of every bit that's you know, a bit of black that's here, and you outline the inside. So all these shapes, all the white shapes will be outlined. So I'm going to show you how I do that. So I take that image and I just drag it directly to uh, Light Burn. That image on there right now, if you printed it, it would print it. It would print it in the uh, image printing mode. So if you go into uh, your preview, you'll see that this thing is going to be printed um, using dots, small, small, fine dots. If you change some of those settings, you can change it to a different mode. You can change it to a grayscale, and you'll get a little bit different um, look at how it does it. This one doesn't do such a great job because it's taking everything and trying to make it uh, small dots, which even the white. So um, since that doesn't work well for us, if you take and right click on that image, anywhere on that image in the workspace, there is a option down here that says trace image. You click that and you'll see that it has now generated these lines and those lines follow this JPEG. And so this is the difference between vector and uh, raster. So a raster image like a bitmap or a JPEG is made up of a bunch of squares, of a bunch of pixels. A, uh, a vector image is made up of lines, true mathematically calculated lines. You'll see here they actually kind of follow. You can see they follow and do the best average. You can zoomify this to billboard size uh, or down to postage stamp size and it will retain the right shape. So that's the benefit of using lines. There are some uh, options here. You can change the threshold which says, hey, uh, this darkness of item gets outlined, this darkness doesn't. So I usually leave it at, the, at whatever they have it set off at 128, I think, um, and just let it do its thing. Over here, the cutoff, this changes another portion of it. I, To be quite honest, I don't know exactly what it does other than it differentiates the black from the white and it cuts off at a certain level and doesn't outline things. I don't know exactly how it works. I just say, hey, heck, leave it here. So what you're going to do is you're going to hit click OK, and it's going to generate up here a separate layer. It won't show it, but it's generating one. You'll turn off the image, output and show, and you'll turn this one on and you'll automatically see this is an image. This is one I already had in here from before, um, but this will generate another uh, image or another layer with a fill line mode. I'm just going to go down here and reassign this to zero, zero, so it makes it easy. It will arbitrarily choose the speed power. I don't know how to do that better. Um, I don't know how to automatically choose the right default settings, but in any case, you'll need to adjust that. So then it, it chooses line. You can do line, fill, fill line, and offset fill. Offset fill is one of my favorite tools lately because it works really, really well and it's fast. Um, I usually set this anywhere between 70 and 150 lines per inch um, just to try to make it uh, quick, but not too quick. Uh, so when you preview this, you'll see that it actually traces inside each one of those shapes that it's drawn. So when you look at zoom back, it does a pretty good job of creating that dark shade. If you look up close, it just basically traces inside of those shapes, uh, concentric circles, ovals, lines, etc., over and over and over again. If you get really close, you can kind of see all the different moves that it's gonna make. When those are burned, they won't burn to this very fine setting because that laser actually has a width on it. Uh, and I don't remember the exact width, but it's about the size of a pencil tip that it'll burn. So some of these will actually blend together, and then when you get it all burned out, it's going to look something like this. This is a pretty good rendering. I've done this um, on a number of uh, pieces. Currently, it says an hour. Um, I tend to fiddle with some of this. 90, 985 is good for the wood that I'm using. Um, you can kind of get in here and say, well, let's try 75 lines per inch and see if that's enough 
to actually create an image inside of there that's going to look good. So we'll click preview again and it'll pull up. So now you get 30 minutes. So I'd say somewhere in between there, depending on what time you have. I won't, I won't run my laser any longer than an hour at 85% just because I want that thing to live for a while. Um, so that's, that's how I do the lines, um, start to finish. And then, you know, I would just click wherever I need to place this on the, on the table and go for it. All right. Hope that helped.